Hi, my name is Dr. Simon Bailey, and in this video I will be discussing how best to approach the clinical consultation portion of your PACES exam. The clinical consultation comprises two separate 20 minute encounters. You will get five minutes to read the scenario before entering the station. My advice would be to use this time to plan your questioning, covering all possible differential diagnoses, and consider which systems and which focus part of that system may be relevant. Of course, this may change as the scenario unfolds and new information may lead you down a different route. Some candidates may wish to make notes with relevant headings acting as an aid memoir to take with them into the station. The clinical consultation may be divided into acute and chronic cases. These will require different emphasis in the history and examination portions. The candidate must master the skill of taking a focused history and performing a relevant examination. It is important to also formulate a differential diagnosis and to identify any relevant issues or concerns and discuss these fully with the patient. The remaining five minutes consist of a discussion of the candidate's findings with the examiner. Candidates are assessed in seven areas on a three-point scale satisfactory, borderline or unsatisfactory. Firstly, you are tested on your clinical communication skills. You must elicit a history relevant to the complaint and explain information to the patient in a focused, fluent and professional manner. Secondly, you must perform the examination in a correct, appropriate and practised professional manner. Thirdly, you must select a sensible and appropriate investigation and treatment plan and explain this to the patient in clear layperson's terms. You will also be specifically assessed on your ability to manage any patient's concerns by acknowledging them and by showing good active listening and empathy. You must also be able to correctly identify any physical signs you must be able to construct a sensible differential diagnosis. Finally, you must maintain patient welfare throughout. Treat the patient sensitively and respectfully, ensuring their comfort, safety and dignity. A structured approach is clearly needed for the clinical consultation encounter. It is perfectly acceptable to perform some parts of the examination while also taking a history. It is also acceptable, and given the time limits, it is often appropriate to perform a very focused examination related to the suspected diagnosis, as often more than one system may need to be examined. For example, in a patient with ankylosing spondylitis, it is more appropriate in this station to listen for aortic regurge together with the other focused areas of the cardiology exam rather than a complete examination, lying the patient on the left and listening for mitral stenosis. This is because you will be expected also to listen to the lungs for, for pulmonary fibrosis and perhaps the chest expansion, together with looking at the Achilles tendons for evidence of tendonitis. It may also be appropriate to do a brief musculoskeletal examination of the axial spine. It quickly becomes obvious that there will be not enough time to perform the complete individual system examinations that are required. On that note, make sure you have a practice specific technique to examine conditions that often appear in this station that do not fall fully within the gastrointestinal, respiratory, cardiology or neurological systems, as in acromegaly, Cushing's disease, systemic sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis and thyroid disease. Do not fall into the trap of always trying to fully explain a suspected diagnosis to a patient. There may not always be enough time to do this 
and it is not always appropriate. For example, in a patient who has yet to be investigated for episodes of visual disturbance and paresthesia, do not tell them that they have multiple sclerosis in a bid to demonstrate to the examiner that you think this may be a differential diagnosis. It would be more appropriate in a situation such as this to outline an investigation plan to the patient and agree an appropriate follow-up. You can of course showcase your knowledge in differential diagnosis during the five minutes of examiner questioning. This may start with the examiner asking you to summarise the important aspects of the case. However, it is extremely important to listen to the examiner question and perhaps pause slightly to ensure you are answering exactly what is being asked. It is all too easy to quickly answer what you think they need to know rather than specifically what was being asked.